welcome back to my channel. So uh, I was thinking with the uh, rise of mainstream D&D from like Critical Role and other uh, streaming uh, games, um, I was thinking maybe you guys have been watching them for a while and want to know how to uh, how to play, how to get into D&D. Um, well, the best way to do that is to find somebody who plays D&D so they can teach you and tell you how to do it. Um, sometimes there's uh, sometimes there's sometimes you can find like Facebook groups in your area or nearby that you can um, contact and be like, hey, <coughs> I want to learn how to play D and D, and they'll welcome you in open arms. Um, maybe there's like local game uh, game groups nearby. Um, like there's a few in my area that I've gone to a couple times. But if there's not, and you don't have any friends or family or whatever who play D and D, um, so I would recommend. The best way to start D&D is to buy um, the essential kit for D&D. <coughs> um, this, and maybe the starter set. I like this one better because the starter set um, does have pre-generated characters and all that stuff. But this one actually has like a a mini player's handbook, which is kind of neat. Sorry, this is mine. I've, uh, this is my picture. Um, so they have a Central's Kit rule book, which is a mini player's handbook. It doesn't have all the classes and all the spells and all that stuff in it, but it has enough to get you started and how to build your own characters and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this also comes with um, a pre-generated game. So if you've never played D&D before and you don't know how to homebrew one, start with that. Um, I would recommend probably doing that first, because when I started D&D, I've only played homebrews, and then when I... When my, when my group moved, went off to college and whatnot and moved to several areas, I had to start a new group. Um, and I had never really DM'd before. Um, <coughs> and um, so homebrew was kind of a task because you're like, how do I build a, um, build a game or whatever? Uh, build an adventure. Um, and it's sometimes difficult to do that. So I would recommend doing a, uh, doing a adventure first to help you whatnot. Uh, this doesn't belong there. That's my place. <coughs> um, okay, the Essentials Roll Kit also has, like, handouts, and it also comes with dice. Oops. also comes with dice and stuff. Enough dice for everything. So, has a lot of dice that you'll need for your spells and all that stuff. Um, it comes with a gem screen, which has all the quick looks for, like, stats and for like travel and money for ale and stuff um and has magic items and maps and all that stuff uh i'm not doing a full review of this because it's been out for a while and well i've sort of missed the jump on when it came out uh, so but if you want to start D, &D i don't recommend getting this the essential skin now for building your characters um, if you have trouble with the essential skit building your characters and you didn't get the starter set, um, this is better, the starter set. Um, <coughs> not a sponsor, but go on D&D Beyond. They have a randomize button. You can just randomize and you get a level one character. So you can just start and play with that. There's also step-by-step, -step, um, guides on there that you can do, um, <coughs> for that. Uh, how do you get your friends into play D&D? Well, ask them if they like to play video games. If they like to play video games like Skyrim, Fallout... Uh, Zelda, Witcher, <coughs> D&D is essentially video games with no limit. Um, there's no limit on where you can go, what you can do, what you can say, or whatever. Um, and so that's a good way to transition them into D&D. If they like video games, you know, they like Skyrim, or Witcher, or whatever, fantasy games, D&D. Because you can be your fantasy hero with no limit. <coughs> um... To an extent, obviously there's rules and stuff, but to an extent you can be your fantasy hero with no limit. You can go wherever, do whatever, and there's no limit, so you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to wait through story to get to a certain point. You can essentially skip there if your DM obviously allows, but again, it's it's basically video games with no limit. That's what I would say about it. Um, another way I would put it is um, for just players who just are interested in how to play d d or don't quite understand it. Um, <coughs> we're trying, sort of changing gears. Um, for those who don't quite understand, how do you play D&D or what is D&D? It's essentially a choose-your-own-adventure story 
with minor rules, but essentially no limit. There's no limit on the outcomes of what choices you can make. So that's another way you can um, get your friends into doing it. <coughs> also, if your friends like Stranger Things, and that's where they heard about D&D, &D, there's a box for that. Dungeons & Dragons Stranger Things box. Even has a Diamond Gorge in it. As a figure. Now this one is a free generated adventure as well. Um, it doesn't have the rules, like the rule book in it, but if you just want to sort of start and you like Stranger Things, this is a good way to start. Um, also comes with dice. Because, um, <coughs> now it doesn't have nearly as much as the Essentials Kit, um, but it has a starter set rule book, so it has how to play, combat, adventuring, and spell cut, and all that. And it's a quick little go through. And then, uh, again, fans of the show, they might recognize Hunt for the Thessal Hydra, which is the adventure that Mike Wheeler um, wrote for his friends in the first, ep first episode and what, of Stranger Things. That being said, this obviously isn't exactly the game that they were playing, because they threw in the Demogorgon because the Demogorgon is cool and because that's what Stranger Things is all about. So they made it into a D&D monster. So essentially, they threw in that just for funsies. But <coughs> yeah, um, but this is a nice, if they like Stranger Things, they can do that. And they can do this. Um, yeah, it comes with like pre-generated characters. There's like six of them or eight. Uh, or just five. I can't count. Just five of them. But it has pretty dedicated share sheets, so that helps you start your game. Um, or your group for the game. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I just have to organize these properly. I don't like just putting things in the box. Let's get there. Yeah, so if your friends like Stranger Things, it's also a good way to do D&D. You can also mention, hey, Strange they did D&D uh, &D and Stranger Things, and they don't want to do this specifically, they just want to do their own adventure. You can do that too. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm just... Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll go run through a little bit of how to play D&D. &D. Let me just open one of these boxes again just for the dice say again. Um, so essentially, pull out all these. So essentially, so this is a small little thing on how to play D&D. &D. Um, very basic. I might, if you like, I can do a full in-depth how to play D&D. &D. Um, but essentially, so D&D, &D again, is... Uh, story, like, uh, choose your own adventure with some rules, but essentially ultimate freedom. But what basically determines what happens, opposed to just options you choose in a choose your own adventure or a mini game, is a d20. <coughs> <coughs> so I got this big one. So this is a 20 sided dice. So essentially, roll the dice, depending on how high or, lo or low you've rolled it, depends on how successful you are at the action you like to choose. You like to jump from a a, uh, a dock to a ship, roll d20. That's on that one. You fall into the water. <coughs> if you'd like to, um, trying to think. Um, if you want to try to swipe a guy's pants, that's a 15. Maybe successful, maybe not. I don't know. Um, or pick or pick their pocket or whatever. That's a 19. There you go. You successfully. Pick their pocket. Um, if you like to shoot somebody with a bow and arrow, that's a seven. Probably doesn't hit. Um, but essentially, basically, this determines what your outcome does um, on high or low. And that's essentially how you play DD. You roll the dice and see what happens. <coughs> now, again, there's a bit more to it. Like, there's the damage and weapon dice or whatever. So essentially, different weapons have different dice that you use um, and different. Um, and different damages. So, for example, a short sword is a d6. So, you'd roll this. That's a 6. Let's say it hits. Um, you roll d you roll a d6, which is a regular sided dice. And that's a 1 that I rolled. Did 1 damage to this orc or whatever. So, essentially, that's how it works. 
for D&D and also for spells or whatever. Spells also you roll D20. Well, depending on what spell. But, again, your your what happens is turned by the dice and the dungeon master, the person who's in charge and running the game for you. Um, so, I find it really simple to get the hang of, especially 5th edition. It's less number crunching than other editions. Um, so, definitely start with 5th. Um, <coughs> and, um, so yeah, I think that's it for how to sort of start and get into D&D &D and a little bit how to play it. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment down below. So tell me more how you want. If you want me to do certain videos or reviews or whatever, just let me know. And I will see them and do them probably. And um, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.